in in studio for a little bit longer is Mr. William Joyce. His new book is called Jack Frost, The End of the Beginning. And the book signing is Saturday, December 8th. Barnes & Noble in Shreveport starts what time? I'm sorry. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Until whenever. Until I'm done. This is another in that series mm -hmm. featuring those characters. Yep. Um, Supposedly the last, but I'm having too much fun. I may do more. Okay, see, that was kind of my question, and I made the Sherlock Holmes reference. Oh, he and Moriarty over the cliff, over the waterfall. Do you ever uh, just... Oh, like, yes, I was so sick of these guys. I mean... Yeah, do you? This book was so hard to do because, you know, it's supposed to wrap up the five, the five volumes and the whole epic saga of these characters of how the guardians of childhood, how Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy... The Man in the Moon and um, the Easter Bunny and Jack Frost and, and I ended up putting in uh, Mother Nature. I mean, and Mother Goose. They're all how they came to be who they are and that they are oh, vast, Santa, amazing. Santa Claus is Iron Man. It's awesome. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. And and I mean, I just wanted to make them cool, you know, and fantastic and kind and brave and everything you you, you look up to. And the sort of James Bonds of childhood. and But after five books and several thousand pages, I was getting weary. And I was like, gosh. And doing the last of a series, we have to wind up all these threads that have been going on in the other four books. And I couldn't even remember everything that I had in all the other books. So I had to go back and make a timetable and read everything and do a synopsis and go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's what happened in book three. So it was... It was a harder book to do, but also I was just, I was sort of like, I was, I was having, you know, Jack Frost burnout. But by the time I got done, I was so pleased with how the book ended itself. And, I, and a writer oftentimes is just sort of led by some powers that are not quite in the forefront of what you, you don't know what you're doing most of the time. You're just kind of you feel are you an outline guy or do you just start and see where it goes i start and see where it goes and well, and it took me to a place i did not expect in the end it's uh, i think the book is very touching and emotionally satisfying in a way that i was i was surprised by go what ahead are you, what are you we... working on now what's next for you what's at the what's at the bill joyce man cave computer <laughs> right now well there's a bunch of stuff i can't talk about yet Boo. but you know so There's a bar at Wine Country. I'll look over your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yes, listen in. You'll see. I mean, I'm working on several book, books. I'm working on several movies and different levels of completion for each. And I'm working on, you know, developing a bunch of these into films uh, as a part of this this new endeavor. And um, so there's tons to do. And it's been nice to just have Jack done. Yeah. You know, and and have that series maybe over with, except I, as I, I've had so much fun with it. And there's been such an amazing response to to Jack and the novel that I'm like, I don't know if I can give him up. He's sort of my I'm a, my fictional doppelganger or, <laughs> or he's the guy I wish I was. Right. You know? Right. And and so I will likely do more Jack Frost stuff. It's just he's too cool and too much fun to to write about Let's and, talk about uh, movies for a second okay. matt do we have the oscar night soundbite <laughs> i run my headphones loud you should be able to hear this one look we're just these two swamp rats from louisiana you said you heard that a couple of seconds ago yeah. and you know oh my god where did i come up with that it was for the fantastic flying books of morris lesmore which was a 2012 was that it 2013 i can't remember me either <laughs> Tell me about that night. Tell me about that whole Oscar experience. Oh my gosh, it would take too long, but I'll try. I, the speech, the clip you just played. Right. I don't know where that came from. They had, before the Oscars, there's a wonderful uh, lunch, the Oscar lunch. And all the nominees go, and it's at the Beverly Hills Hilton. And, and it's just it is one of the it's just so much fun i mean we sat next to george clooney we're at the table with george clooney and the guys who did the film that won best picture that year the um the artist mm -hmm. and and george clooney was so fun and charming and fun and funny with us i mean and ordering more and more wine and we were having just a ball and but they tell us at that luncheon and everybody gets a little a little toasted at this thing but everybody relaxes and that's the point it's like you're about this is we're coming to the last stage of this the show is in two weeks 
and we want you to be prepared. If you win, we want you to do well on stage because several billion people are going to watch. And they show a film of all the worst acceptance speeches. <laughs> oh, wow. And you, you're just like, ooh. Oh. And they're like, so please don't pull out a piece of paper and just read. You know, try to prepare something that is short, witty, and sounds like you made it up on the spot. But get it down pat. You have, I think it's 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. You will see a clock ticking down, you know, your mm -hmm. time. If you go over that time, unless you're being brilliant, we're going to cut the mic off. Wow, and don't man. keep talking because you're going to look like a jerk. You're going to yeah. sit there talking into the thing and nothing's going to be coming out. And they're going to be playing exit music. And wow. You'll just look bad. So keep it short. Keep it witty. Keep it moving. Keep it emotional. Keep it all these things. But don't pull out a piece of paper and read. Okay? Mm -hmm. So Brandon and I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what to say. And they also said, only one of you, if there's multiple winners, only one should speak. So it's like, we're not going to do that. We're both going to talk. So we worked out this speech the day before. We were supposed to go to some party, and we didn't. We pulled into this bar in, in Los Angeles, sat at the bar, and decided what we were going to say. And we mapped it out, and we worked it up. And I even had it written down, and I had a, I wore a hat from On Time Fashions here in Freeport, Louisiana. Oh, cool. And um, at the Oscars. And I had it under my hat. When they announce your category, and a friend of mine told me who had won once, your brain will start to do things that you can't explain, mm -hmm. and you maybe will never experience again, and I don't know how to describe them. But when they started announcing our category, I got tunnel vision. Whooshing noise. Just, yeah. And I couldn't hear. Oh. And I just stared at the guy ahead of me's head. <laughs> <laughs> the back of his head because he was he was he had done the film that for Pixar that was nominated against us and I thought well that's who's gonna win yeah. if we don't so since I can't hear right now when I see him start to stand up I'll know we lost right right and but then they tear open the envelope and you hear that and it's as quiet as a tomb in this room full of five thousand people no matter what category everybody gets quiet when they tear the envelope and then. I can't, it was the girls from uh, Bridesmaid that announced us. And I heard the winner is the fan. And I went, and that's just, oh, I don't know what happened from then on. I'm, I'm getting I, chill bumps. I, I think my atoms all like loosened. You wow. Know? I became, I became like a cloud of joy. And I just remember feeling helium like and floating towards the, the stage. And got to the podium and they handed me the Oscar and they handed Brandon his Oscar. And right in front of us is, is George Clooney and uh, Sandra Bullock, like 10 feet away on the front row. Our, our tuxes were made by um, <laughs> Dickies. I remember the Fort tuxedos Worth. were yes. unique. Mm -hmm. So in one of the weird interviews that we had in the weeks prior, someone from uh, Vogue magazine asked us, who will you be wearing? You know, and it's sort of like, Dickies. you know, <laughs> and Brandon's from Fort Worth and he goes, Dickies of Fort Worth. <laughs> oh, wow. And they printed it. And then a few days later, the head of Dickies called and said, I would love to make y'all's tuxes. I'm going to send a, a, our a tailor who does like all the movie stars stuff for Dickies. Oh, my gosh. Fly him in from Chicago. The only thing is you have to use Dickies fabric. And we're like, okay. So we almost had made um, <laughs> camouflage tuxedos. Oh, wow. But we decided, no, oh, it's a little too, you know, rural. <laughs> and um, let's, let's go old school. Swamp ratty. Swamp ratty. <laughs> we picked out instead asbestos black. And, um, oh, my God. It had, and they're fabulous tuxedos. I st it's still my favorite tuxedo because it does not wrinkle. It has, it keeps its form. Oh, have, wow. You know, that's, that's a, it doesn't have to go in the dryer. It comes out of the spin cycle ready to go. You could shoot bullets at it and it would just, <laughs> and, but the lining is danger orange and the piping is danger orange. Oh, how funny. The flags that they wave, you know, yeah. that's what the interior of our tuxedos wow. are. Which, against the black is quite vivid. Where is your Oscar? Right now it's in my kitchen. <laughs> sitting on the counter sitting on the counter it's next to okay for a while it was i had when i had three emmys it was they were labeled um salt pepper and tabasco <laughs> 
And then when the Oscar came in, I was like, what condiment can I name that after? And I just never could come up with a good one. So then more Emmys came and I just went, okay, they're all going to the office. I just can't, I can't keep naming condiments. Yeah. We've got time for one more. Can I ask one more? Oh, wait, but let me just, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So we stood up there on the podium with our Dickies suits on and the danger orange was the lights are making our shirts glow orange and we knew our speeches but we heard george clooney lean over to sandra bullock and go what's up with the short film guys tuxes <laughs> they're like they look like atomic like they're glowing oh, really? we looked down and we could see yes we were or just wow we both forgot our speeches and i the, so the first thing that came into my mind for some reason was we're just a couple of swamp rats from louisiana <laughs> That's how we get, that's why oh I said Oh my that. goodness. You got about two or two and a half minutes. You had talked early, early in the hour, and we talked about computers and CG and holograms and where the business is. And <laughs> the hocus every, pocus. Exactly. But for you, at mm -hmm. the end of the day, isn't, isn't it still the best when it's just a picture and words on a page? Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter how pretty all the pictures are. It doesn't matter how fantastic the CG is. It, it's, it's all just colors moving around. Unless there's a good story, it doesn't make any difference. So what I, the thing I have to always concentrate on most and get right is a compelling story. Something that makes people say, I wonder what happens next. Everything else is, is just, it's lanyap unless you have that story.